Short answer, no. You don't need to be changing your intermittent fasting window, most likely. I'm going to be diving into exactly the reason why in today's video. Now, the main reason why people think you need to switch up your eating window with intermittent fasting to continue seeing results comes down to keeping the body guessing or this theory that you have to keep the body guessing. Now, typically what people mean by switching up the eating window is having periods of shorter and longer fasts. So this might be like a 14 hour fast one day and then doing like a 22 or 24 hour fast on the next day. Now, although this definitely has some therapeutic purposes in very specific cases, for most people, not only is this unnecessary, but it could actually be counterproductive to weight loss goals. And this idea really goes back to more of a calorie restrictive type of ideology around weight loss, because if you are simply using calorie restriction or what's also called a state of semi-starvation, yeah, you do need to cycle in and out of that because the body will start to decrease the metabolism if you're not getting enough of your body's needs on any given day. But as you guys have seen with my previous videos like this one right here, that is not why intermittent fasting works for weight loss. In fact, the main reason why intermittent fasting works for weight loss is because of its effect on the storing hormone insulin. Because typically what I've seen, the reason why people want to switch up their window is because they've experienced a plateau in their weight loss. And usually this has nothing to do with the fast itself. Rather the two main issues I see for why it is that people experience a plateau with their weight loss comes down to what they're eating during their eating window and the quality of their sleep. So how do you break through a weight loss plateau if you're using intermittent fasting? First things first, you really need to be addressing your meals. And this comes down to a really individual basis because some people are going to be a lot more carbohydrate sensitive than others. This means that some people secrete a lot more insulin to the same amount of carbohydrates as others. And because insulin is that storing hormone and when it's high, fat burning is turned off, it's really important to address your meals to make sure that you're countering that. So by addressing your meals to your carbohydrate sensitivity level, some of the easiest ways being reducing or removing added sugars and using higher quality, lower glycemic starches if you are using starches, but also really making sure you're addressing protein. Protein is actually the most important nutrient when it comes to addressing body recomposition goals. And from my experience of working with thousands of people around the world, that is one of the biggest missing components for a lot of people. That's why I actually did a full live stream on how you can actually calculate your protein needs. I highly recommend you check that video out right here. Now, if you've addressed your meals, you've addressed your carbohydrate sensitivity, your protein level, your fat level, another great strategy is to make sure that you're also incorporating some type of exercise or walking, not because of likely what you think it is, but more so because of the favorable effects that walking and exercise can have on insulin sensitivity. So this actually helps to double down on the benefits that you're getting with your intermittent fasting protocol. I personally like to make sure I always get a walk in a completely fasted state to make sure I'm getting those doubled benefits. And then that last really important component is to address sleep. Most Americans aren't getting great sleep. Even if you're sleeping throughout the night, it's possible that you're not getting deep, high quality and restorative sleep. And the reason why this is so important is because poor sleep actually increases our stress hormone cortisol the next day and higher levels of cortisol are directly tied to weight gain around the belly. Poor sleep also increases the hunger hunger hormone ghrelin, which tends to really increase sugar cravings, which will drive up insulin levels. One way that I personally help to improve my sleep is by taking a magnesium supplement. Magnesium helps to act as a natural muscle relaxant. It also has been found to help naturally bump up melatonin, which is our sleep hormone. Another great strategy is to make sure that you're not using any tech, AKA no tech time, that 30 to 60 minutes before bed. This also helps your body to naturally increase melatonin and naturally get that high quality deep sleep. Now make sure you're using intermittent fasting the smart way, not the hard way, but you can check out the details with this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love the science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.